December 11th, 2014. That can mean only one thing. Steve Wolfong, Director of Recruiting for 24-7 Sports, has stopped by to share some knowledge. Steve, thanks for joining us on this glorious winter morning. Good morning, Daniel. Another show with more good news to talk about regarding Ohio State on the recruiting trail. The Buckeyes are on fire down the stretch as they continue to build on the nation's number four ranked recruiting class. No doubt. And, um, I was going to say this is not the hardest show to program for because each week, even with doing the Bucknuts 90, it seems like there's a recruit that joins the fold. The latest, Michael Weber, the standout running back from Detroit Cash Tech. Running back has been an interesting kind of discussion throughout the recruiting process. Weber was, of course, at one point committed to Michigan. Things apparently haven't gone so well at Michigan this year, so he's decided to join the good guys. Take us through what you think of Weber. I know you've been very public about that. What you think was maybe the, the final domino to fall in his recruitment uh, to become a Buckeye, and maybe where that has the Buckeye standing overall with running back recruiting. Yeah, well, um, ta- I talked with Michael on Monday, uh, and he was very excited about being committed to Ohio State. He committed to Ohio State on Monday when Coach Meyer – uh, and, and Coach Coombs went up to Detroit and, and made the rounds, including a stop at Cass Tech, uh, to see Mike and uh, uh, his teammate Josh Al- Alibier Lobby, who's uh, committed, who's been committed to Ohio State since Friday Night Lights, and uh, uh, it was just a matter of when it was going to come become public. But I love the love the young man as a player. 2,268 yards rushing, 29 touchdowns as a senior. Uh, you talk to high school coaches in the Detroit area. And they'll tell you he's the best player on the offensive side of the football to come out of the state in a while. Uh, so uh, he has earned the respect of his peers uh, and guys that have coached against him, earned the respect of his rivals, just a physical runner. And he's a guy who scored 74 career touchdowns now uh, out of school where it's not so easy to play early. Uh, they've had guys, they had good players in front of Weber when he was uh, a sophomore uh, when he went for 21 touchdowns in a state championship run. Uh, so uh, he, he's definitely earned his time on the field at Detroit Cats Tech. And as far as his commitment to Ohio State, he was leaning towards Ohio State this summer uh, at, at one point, and he kind of went back and forth. And I think he wanted to be uh, – I think he wants to be the guy in the class that he chose. I think that was important to him as well, and being being the, the lone running back in Ohio State's class I think is exciting to him. That was also exciting to him uh, when when he was committed to Michigan, and, and then obviously we know uh, the coaching change and, and the season didn't go as well as they wanted it to in Ann Arbor, and uh, Weber opens things up. But he was always high on Ohio State, and he was always high on Michigan, and, and, and he was always high on, on Michigan State, particularly because Curtis Blackwell, uh, their off-field recruiting guy, was there, and he had a great relationship with Weber and his family. But Michigan State gets L.J. Scott, Ohio State gets Michael Weber, and more – prominent running backs come into the Big Ten. Yeah, Michigan, you have to add someone that's unlikely they'll be able to add anyone of that ilk. Just before we get off the running back tip for one second here, the other name that has been bandied about for Ohio State really throughout the recruiting process is Damian Harris out of Berea, Kentucky. There was one point in time when it felt like he was going to be part of the mix and team in pictures with uh, Jay Sean Cornell and Justin Hilliard. Now it looks like that ship may have sailed kind of bring us up to date on what the Weber commitment does to the recruitment of Damian Harris. Well, I think Damian Harris is the type of guy that he's the type of recruit where if he says he wants to come, you you, you probably make room for him. But I think as everyone knows on Bucknuts uh, with myself reporting and, and Bill Kurlick and Alex Gleitman, the Bucknuts recruiting insiders also uh, reporting for, for a while now that this one looked like it was trending away from Ohio State. Damian does, keeping regular touch with the Ohio State staff and 
says all the right things, and Urban Meyer was in there this week. But I think the writing's been on the wall for a while that this is an Alabama-Kentucky battle. And Ohio State, uh, you know, went went in there this week and, and took another stab at it. We'll see what happens. He's announcing in January, but uh, I don't see him in the Ohio State class where obviously there was a time where I thought he would be a Buckeye. And I think, you know, talking to sources on the next level, they thought he would end up in Ohio State. But uh, Kentucky gained a lot of traction here and, and uh, caught his attention early in the season. And then uh, Alabama, similar to Ohio State, they have in the ability to come on strong late for a prospect and they've certainly done that and I could see that one going either way between the Crimson Tide and Kentucky and and some people believe that he's going to end up in Tuscaloosa so we'll see what happens. Very interesting can't say I'm too surprised about that okay so uh, 23 spots filled Michael Weber is number 23 and this is kind of the moving target discussion and the class keeps expanding just tell us kind of where we are now, where we go from here, as we can kind of put a bow on recruiting as of uh, today. Well, we'll try and pinpoint it as best as possible because, you know, uh, Coach Meyer and his staff are, are working to always uncover another prospect that they think could help them win a national championship at Ohio State. So they continue to watch senior tape on, on 2015 guys and continue to evaluate guys that that could potentially – a land delayed offer, and then, like we just said about Alabama and, Ohio, and referencing Ohio State at the same time, uh, the Buckeyes with what they offer uh, out of the program, they, they can close very quickly on a guy that we're not talking about right now. But the names on the board that we do know, I, I definitely like where Ohio State stands with uh, former Clemson defensive back commit Jawan Briscoe. Uh, I, I still see him in in the Ohio State class uh, come National Signing Day. A guy that. I saw in the Ohio State class uh, as early as or as late as even yesterday, uh, top 247 receiver Lawrence Cager. I now see him headed elsewhere, most likely Alabama or Notre Dame after talking to some sources. So uh, Ohio State may be done at the receiver position unless they uh, find another guy late in the process that they like. Uh, but they've certainly uh, loaded up on talented players at that position over the last couple of years, and there's a lot of exciting playmakers that are uh, in that Ohio State offense right now. But no, they're still swinging for the fences on guys like top 100 defensive tackle Christian Wilkins. Uh, they're bringing in Perry Beckner Jr. in January, the five-star defensive end. Uh, a guy that I think Ohio State is in it for uh, is top 100 offensive tackle Isaiah Prince, who's going to take his official January 23rd, as first reported uh, by Bugnut insider Bill Kierlich. So you got Isaiah Prince coming in uh, in January. I think Ohio State's in the mix there with, with Maryland and, and Alabama. So uh, we'll see what happens with that one following that trip. And, and so those are the those are kind of the, the main names that we know about. But, uh, again, like I preface this statement, you don't know who's going to pop up. The guys in the Columbus football office, they're working hard. Yeah, that we, and we like that very much. Speaking of working hard, as you can tell, the breath of Steve Wolfong working hard for you. Keep it locked into Bucknuts for the knowledge, Steve. Thanks again for joining us, brother. Daniel, appreciate it. Look forward to next Thursday, Boston.